The shirt from music video Wrecked by Estonian artist Tommy Cash is a good candidate for copycat based cleanup work, because one of the copycat's strengths is coping with amorphous moving and transforming surfaces like reflections. A few knights are marching on a field and in the armor reflection we can see a movie bird arm and some people in the background, which we would like to get rid of. It is usually beneficial to constrain the work area because then training can concentrate on aspects that are more relevant to our task. Stabilizing the plate and cropping is the easiest way to do it. I also shuffle the stabilized plate to new layer because then I can easily access it as input training data with all the intermediate transforms applied. For first session of training I use just one single frame. With a bit of paintwork I produce the so-called ground truth image. Ground truth defines what we want our input frame to turn to and copycat model learns how to transform from input to ground truth. This transform can then be used on all frames of the shot or a number of different shots in sequence to apply the effect. To make train model more resilient to object movement in screen space, one simple way is to generate additional synthetic ground truth frames. For this I use transform node and random expressions for rotation and scale. After training sequence is done, I bake out the input and ground truth frames. Always make sure that the input and ground truth sequences are properly aligned both spatially and temporally. For training, connect the input and ground truth to copycat node, set parameters as needed and let it run. From the training graph we can see that loss is gradually getting lower and lower, which is what we want. With 10,000 epochs and 10 frame sequence, first training session took around an hour with RTX 2080 Ti GPU. As we can see, first results look pretty good. Reflection has a nice natural feel to it and actually looks like a reflection. There are some offending black areas in second half of shot which appear to the increasing differences between training data and input. Model doesn't know what to do with these new emerging patterns. To fix this, one fast option is to use the produced inference as basis for additional ground truth frames. Run plate through inference, add some paint touch-ups and append into training sequence as new frame. With retime node it is turned into infinitely looping clip that is then cut to training set length, pushed through synthetic frame generation and saved as new training data. For a new training session I usually create new folder to version the training data up. For initial weights, results from previous training can be used. This allows starting from where previous session ended, but with new training data. As can be seen from graph, loss is already pretty low and new session manages to lower it even more, while training to produce new ground truth frames in addition to previous ones. After training for an hour, previous offending black splotches are mostly gone. To see our semi-automatic paintwork in action, separate the area of interest and merge it over original plate. Copycat training is more effective on denoised plates, so regraining and so on should follow as usual. For any remaining problem areas, simply repeat the ground truth frame process. Adding new frame holes and appending them together is kind of tedious though, and it occurred to me that Richard Fraser's optical for frame repair gizmo would help here. It allows setting keyframes on frames of interest and compresses them to sequence. For frame repair, it then expands them again using GoFlow, but for copycat, we want just a frame sequence, so simply disable the GoFlow node inside the gizmo. Do your paintwork, mark the ground truth frames, press rebuild, and pick up the dropped sequence in frame range and the pen clip nodes. For second example, I'd like to show a more experimental test. I have rolled out some images of apples and oranges to use as ground truth. For inputs, I use the most basic shapes, soft circles. For red apple, red circle, for green, green one, and for yellowish apple, yellow circle, which is the additive version of red and green. Orange is white circle formed by adding blue. Is it possible to train a model to turn these same sized circles into different fruits based on color? After a bit of training, an interesting fruit morpher is created. Feeding the inference node with red and green circles that gradually overlap produces a visual morph from red and green apples to yellow apple. If I then add blue to it, it morphs into an orange. But what if I create a pattern of random circles? Well, I get a fruit generator. By clipping and blurring some noise patterns, I create the dot pattern that when fed to trained model hallucinates a canvas of fruits, appearing and morphing into each other randomly. But what about the shape itself? Is it possible to encode, for example, the size of circle into different objects? Well, yes it is. Let's try with some numbers. Text node creates a number for each frame using an expression. As input, there is a soft circle that grows over time. After some training, model is able to turn different sizes of exact same shape into different numbers, softly morphing between them. After number 10 it turns into a mush because training data only ran up to 10, and I believe limitations of learnable pattern size inside the model itself might also come to play here. Using the same dot pattern generator it's possible to hallucinate the canvas of random numbers, similar to fruits, 
simply by changing the size of dots. What the practical use case for such generators could be is yet to be discovered. Copycat is a very flexible platform for all kinds of funky effects and we have only scratched the surface of it. Thank you for watching.